Hello everyone, my name is Fear Dragon, and welcome to my long overdue Patreon vlog. This is, again, very, very long overdue. I know that I uh, promise I do these on a weekly basis, and definitely not keeping up with that. But uh, hopefully you guys will forgive me as I try and get back on the bandwagon. We'll see if this is actually going to be a weekly thing. I think I might try and make it like a monthly thing, just because the problem I ran into is there wasn't really a lot to talk about every single week. So, if I do find something weekly... I'll probably try and keep these much, much shorter than this one's going to be. Uh, this one's probably going to be like 10, 15 minutes long. I'll try and keep the future ones like maybe five, three to like eight minutes long. Three to eight minutes sounds pretty good to me. Uh, but let's go down the topics. There's uh, five things I want to talk about today. First thing, Ladder Heroes. Ladder Heroes is now sponsored by Blizzard Entertainment. I want to give a huge thank you to Blizzard for doing this. This is freaking awesome. I mean... They really don't stand too much crazy amounts to gain, but uh, giving the money, uh, they're giving, uh, or putting the total prize pool to $2,000 total, and that's going to be split between North America and Europe. Uh, I won't go over the specific numbers of the prize pool breakdowns, everything you guys can find that in the Team Liquid thread or, you know, other places, but the general idea is it's going to be $1,000 per region. It's going to be $150 a week given out to the top six players every single week. For each one of these regions, by the way, this is only for like one region, so uh, I guess $300 a week if you're participating in North America and Europe. But uh, $400 for the monthly finals per region, and that's going to be given out to the top eight. So that's kind of a stark difference between the weekly, which originally was giving out top two, is now giving out top six. And the monthly, which originally was giving out top three, is now giving out top eight, which is freaking awesome. Uh, incentivizing those mid-tier players, not just like... Nee, Peely Peely, Jon Snow, Polt, and Hydra, and Puck. Like, those are the only players that I was actually getting to pay out for the weeklies. Uh, so, kind of cool. I'm hoping that that does kind of motivate more people on the North American ladder, as well as the European ladder. Really excited to uh, get all those Skype contacts and finally be able to talk with all of those European players. And maybe get on better, uh, I guess, better repertoire with those players as well. Um, but regardless, that's going to be the North American Ladder Heroes and European Ladder Heroes news for Blizzard Entertainment. The second thing that I want to talk about is the weekly NA Ladder Heroes show. And this is probably going to become a NA slash like EU. It's going to become a Ladder Heroes show. But what I want to do is right now, the only public facing aspect of Ladder Heroes is the monthly finals. That's the only time you really get to see anything for Ladder Heroes unless you're checking the site or you're looking at the tweets that I send out about like, here are the top 20 players for Ladder Heroes this week. So what this is, is an effort to try and bring more attention to the top eight players on the ladder every week. So what I'm doing is I've messaged all eight of the players, the top eight players from last week. And I said, hey, can you send me the best replay you have? Not necessarily the most like perfect replay where you didn't make any mistakes or anything that you just kind of stopped over your opponent. I want the most fun game, like from an entertainment, from a viewing standpoint, what do you think will be the most entertaining and awesome game for people to watch? Send me that. You don't even have to be the winner in it. Just like an awesome game. And I'm going to do basically a weekly recap uh, show where I highlight the top eight players from the ladder that week. And uh, I already have all the replays. So I'm going to be doing that tomorrow, June 23rd at about 6 p.m. Pacific. Event is on the Team Liquid calendar, so do tune in for that. It's going to be a bit of a trial run for me to see like how much interest there is, how effective it's going to be, and uh, it's all again. It's going to be from replays, which kind of sucks, but they're hand picked out awesome games, which I think should be cool. Like you're going to get to see only cool games. I'm in favor of that. Uh, but that's going to be the weekly recap show that I'm going to be starting up. Uh, I probably will again end up doing it for Europe, but Europe doesn't start Ladder Heroes until July, so. Be on the lookout for that. Third thing, Patreon. Uh, people have been wondering, or I guess I have also been sort of talking about, what am I going to be doing with the Patreon money? Uh, am I going to continue to still put that into North American Ladder Heroes? I'm going to start splitting it up between NA and EU Ladder Heroes. Uh, am I going to put it into something else? And I sort of put out a poll for it, a private poll to the Patreon supporters and a public poll on Twitter. The private poll ended up being a tie between put all the money in North American Ladder Heroes and just do what you want with it on this other tournament idea that you have in mind. And the public Twitter poll was pretty much just, I guess, the tiebreaker, just because it was a tie already from the uh, Patreon supporters. 
And it ended up just kind of going in favor pretty heavily for do it for your new tournament series. Ladder Heroes looks good now with the Blizzard support. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. The teaser for that is that it's called Challenge Wars and something I've been working on for a very long time. I'm sure players may kind of, after hearing the word Challenge Wars, they'll be like, oh, that thing, like that thing that you've been trying to do for like a year and you've had concrete dates planned out for it, but then like a Dream Hack qualifier or an IEM qualifier would pop up and you're like, oh, I have to cancel the and redo the entire thing. Uh, so yeah, that. Uh, I won't say too much more about the event. I'm going to wait till the announcement actually comes out so you guys can find out more about it. But I will say it's a tournament series unlike, I think, anything you guys have seen before. Which, I don't know if that's like building up too much hype or anything like that. But I'm actually really excited about it. And I will say it's going to be a very non-standard tournament series. But that's uh, Challenge Wars and Patreon. So that's where the money for Patreon is going to be going now, of course. If you choose to no longer support me on Patreon, I totally understand. If you choose to support me on Patreon, please feel free. Patreon.com slash FearDragon64. Uh, again, not going to be going toward like my eating funds or anything like that. Pretty much all going toward the event now. So, As for the next topic, the summit. Uh, this is the small little topic I just want to talk about. Uh, it's sort of like an end of video, even though I have one more topic after this. But it's an end of video, like not really talking about myself anymore. So... All you were interested in was the updates on where stuff I was doing was and everything. This is where you can kind of chill out and, you know, close the video. But if you want to hear my thoughts on the Community Summit that's coming up, then stick around. But, yeah, as people have found out, it's been quasi-announced unofficially and on accident, I think. Uh, there is going to be another Community Summit. And... There's been a little bit of negativity, and I should say skepticism, about the summit and the effectiveness of it. And this is something I just really quickly wanted to address, because I definitely understand, and I think there is some validity to it. There have been multiple points, even as someone who attended one of the previous summits, that it's hard to really get a good gauge of how effective the feedback we've given is really being taken into consideration, or how how much of an impact it's really had on Blizzard's decision-making and thought process. And I think what I really want to touch upon is the fact that communication is hard. Communication is actually like a really hard thing, especially on topics that we end up talking about, like, you know, region locking and all these other kinds of crazy stuff with WCS and ladder and balance and all kinds of crazy stuff, um, skins, etc. Like a lot of these things are not black and white issues. They're not just... This is what should be done, and everyone just immediately gets polarized. A lot of times, there's a lot of subtle granularities in much of this. And I think a I think the biggest problem that I have with how the previous summit that I got to go for went down was I feel like a lot of the subtle granularities of the details in what people were saying was sort of lost or misinterpreted. And I think we I saw a lot of points in time where Blizzard was making decisions I could say... Does this go back to that conversation where we were talking about such and such during the summit? Because I think that we were, for the most part, saying A. But they seem to have taken like half of A and half of what we were saying and then diverged into B. So it's this kind of weird thing where I'm not sure whether their decision making itself was different and they disagreed with us on certain points. Or... If there was a, a fundamental misunderstanding on the details of what we were saying. And I think that's something that I'm kind of more optimistic about this particular community summit for. Is that most of the people, I assume, have gone for one of the previous summits. I don't really know the full list of who's going. But I'm hoping that that communication is going to be a little bit better. I know one thing I'm going to be prioritizing. Like, my, my, my role, I feel like, is going to be at the summit. Just because I don't really trust myself to provide a lot of super useful feedback. Um, I'm not, like super duper industry leader like total biscuit in control whatever artosis and etc um so i'm really just going to try and focus on whenever like feedback is given getting blizzard's understanding of the feedback that we gave so that there aren't these kind of like misconceptions of what we were suggesting uh if that is the case of course if it's decision making then Hopefully we can get to the bottom of that as well. But uh, regardless, that is sort of uh, some thoughts I wanted to voice on the community summit since I think there's been a lot of talk about that. The last thing I want to talk about 
is a little bit more me focused and it's going to be that uh, June 23rd, 2016 is going to mark the five year anniversary for my casting in StarCraft. Uh, five years ago tomorrow, as of recording this at least, uh, five years ago tomorrow was going to be the day that I uploaded and cast my first StarCraft II commentary ever. And it was in preparation for a collegiate Starly cast I was going to do with my co-caster, Ama Face, to basically show people like, hey, you know, Purdue StarCraft, my college, has a really cool CSL team. And I want to show people more about our CSL team. I want to show people how awesome we are and the fact that we're winning and doing well. And uh, that was kind of where it all stemmed from. And it's been a really, really long and cool journey. I never, I mean, I can't even imagine like thinking back five years ago that this was ever going to escalate to the point where I'm actually now member of like a big organization like Base Trade TV, sometimes broadcasting to viewers of like between 1,000 to like 5,000 people at any given time where I'm partnered with Blizzard, where I'm like, signing contracts, legal contracts with Blizzard because they're sending me money to do events. Like that's completely just out of the scope of what I ever imagined. And uh, I am really grateful to anyone that's ever helped me, stuck around, given me feedback, given me hate, given me whatever, like interacted with me in any way. Uh, I don't regret a single moment that I've spent in the StarCraft scene. And uh, I don't have any plans of leaving anytime soon. So as long as people don't leave me, I won't leave you. Actually, who? I'm not gonna lie. I'd probably still be doing. And like, I I know that people say this a lot, but like, I still I know that my stream is also not that big yet. Uh, it's still not really at that crazy level of top tier. So I know that I have streams occasionally. That if I go live with a stream, I'll have like an average of five to seven viewers, which is really weird because then like other things, I'll have like easily 500 viewers without any hosts or anything. So it's like. I don't, I don't get it, but uh, I know that I will still be casting, even if I go down to like that many viewers, even if there's nobody listening to me. I just enjoy talking about StarCraft, and I am really, really grateful that people enjoy listening to me talk about StarCraft sometimes, even if, or, you know, even just watching my observing, because I know sometimes you just want to mute me. Uh, but I assume the people that haven't muted me, like probably 15, 20 minutes into this video, are not the ones that I'm talking about. Uh, but regardless, thank you all so much. It's been a wonderful five years, and here's to another five. But that's going to be it. So thank you all so much. I want to give a huge shout-out to the Patreon supporters that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, without them, I would not have been able to make any Ladder Heroes as awesome as it is so far. And I really just don't know how to thank you more besides just, I guess, doing the shout-outs. So a uh, big thank you to Richard Laro. Eddie SC2, who runs OSC. C Tone, who runs Gauntlet SC2. Uh, we have Nerd Street Gamers, very own Joe, who runs Nerd Street Gamers. KJ Freedom, who runs Sidestorm Gaming. A lot of people run things that support me on Patreon. Um, Koa, Bobble Convolute, Razor, Ben Smith, Partoof, uh, NYK, and Zizla, all supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much. It is seriously deeply appreciated. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, you guys can find me at FearDragon64 on Patreon, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, etc. And uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful, wonderful time, and I hope to see you either next week or next month. I'll let you guys know what I end up doing with this vlog and how often I end up doing it. Take care.